With our battery tester working overtime in this weather, I'm going to cover batteries, the charging circuit, and a bit about the components involved in it all. DAF used three different types of batteries, flooded lead acid, advanced glass mat, and enhanced flooded battery. The state of health of a battery and its ability to supply levels of cold cranking amps becomes even more important during the cold winter months. This is because the ability of a battery to supply the maximum available cold cranking amps is reduced by approximately 30% at 0 degrees C, and even more so at lower temperatures. However, the cold cranking amps required for a starting circuit increase in order to overcome conditions such as increased engine oil viscosity and reduced engine component tolerances. It is therefore possible to have a battery that is fully charged with a good open current voltage that will still not be able to start the engine as the state of health and its ability to deliver high levels of cold cranking amps has reached a level that is unable to support the requirements of the starter circuit. We will start at the batteries and specifically jump starting. DAF have some specific guide notes to not blow various ECUs out of the cab, the use of an auxiliary battery or jumper pack at 24 volts or another vehicle with a running engine at 28 volts. When this starting procedure is followed, the vehicle must run for at least two to three minutes before the starter cables are disconnected to prevent damage to the electrical system. This allows the voltage to rise in the flat batteries. As soon as the engine starts running, switch on as many power consumers as possible. After the engine has run for two to three minutes, remove the starter cables and switch off the consumers. After the batteries, the main power supply cable enters the power distribution box. This can be found on the near side wing of an LF and on the near side of the engine block under the PCI ECU. The main power supply cable is connected to a metal collector strip. The metal collector strip provides six fuse positions for the various electrical systems. These include the sense connection for the alternator, power supply before contact to the bulkhead, and power supply from B plus at the alternator. From the power distribution board, we can move on to the alternator and talk about what you'll find in Euro 6, LF, CF and XF models, which then changes to a more simpler setup from model year 17. To start, we have the B plus terminal. This is connected to the power distribution board and supplies 28 volts to charge the truck. At the plug, we have three wires. The sense connection, which is pin four, is used to compensate for voltage losses in B plus. This is literally a fused link wire to the power distribution board. Pin 3 in the plug is the power after contact from the fuse box to the alternator. If the truck isn't charging, check for battery voltage here. And finally, pin 2. This connection is used to activate an error message on the dip via the VIC. Faults which can be detected via this wire are voltage too low, which is under 16 volts, voltage too high, where the power supply is above 31 volts, and open circuit on the wiring. As for the starter motor, this gets its power supply from the batteries. Conditions for activating the starter motor are that the gearbox is in neutral, the engine is not running, we have a correct immobiliser match, the starter motor protection is not active, and the starter motor inhibit is not active. If the starting time is more than 90 seconds continuously, the starter motor is interrupted. A high warning temperature is displayed on the dip, the warning disappears after 15 minutes, and the engine can be started again. The two power wires from the power distribution box are connected to the bulkhead and then to the central box and this supplies the truck with power supply before contact. The ignition switch is supplied power from fuse E037 and when moved from the accessory position to the ignition on it allows current to flow to the ignition relays. Turning the key further supplies the starter motor solenoid with power to command the vehicle to start. As much as you can have powers and grounds at the starter motor, ultimately the PCI issue has the last laugh as this interrupts the low side of the starter motor solenoid and ultimately controls the condition to start the vehicle. Inside the central box we have G015 and G024. These supply power after contact and as we all know are made of chocolate. Last but not least we have VIC which connects to pin 2 on the alternator. I think this is best checked at the bulkhead plug 56L16 if I remember rightly as this likes to break in the wiring harness for the alternator putting the warning on the dip. As usual, hit me up in the comments, drop a like, and hopefully I'll be able to get this other video out finally for next week.